morning. Good morning. Uh, this is making a watch, and uh, figured we'd start going through some stuff. Uh, a lot of questions that commonly get raised for questions that I get asked about firearms all the time, and and more specifically the home defense, personal defense aspect of them, not necessarily hunting. We'll we'll get more into that later on. Um, these are questions I get asked and I see asked, and I've done a lot of research on over the years uh, as far as what's the best home defense weapon, what's the best carry weapon, and there's not really a good answer. Uh, these are the pros and cons of the most common that you're going to see, uh, and some very standard, kind of really common handguns that you either will see or you'll be familiar with or you'll at least know what I'm talking about. Uh, and we'll go ahead and get started here on my right with uh, G7. Check it clear. And it is. So, uh, standard handgun, 17 plus one capacity. I know this thing looks like it's been through the ringer. And this is my uh, most common everyday carry gun, has been for years. I mean, literally five years. I've seen this pistol almost every day. Uh, I can't tell you how many actual thousands of rounds I've been through it. Probably, probably 4,000 rounds since I purchased it. Um, and that's not an exaggeration. And I have not had any issues with it. I have done a little bit of work to it. Uh, but we're going to talk about the pros and cons of a G17. And then versus a G9 versus a... Glock 21 in 45 ACP and versus a Glock 19. So these are all pretty common firearms that at least two have been seen before. So we're going to go ahead and start with the G17. So a really accurate pistol. Like I said, I've never had a jam with me in the five plus years that I've owned it, I've carried it, and I've shot it. Um, that's not to say it's infallible, right? I mean, any semi-automatic auto-loading weapon, revolver, anything with moving parts has the ability to fail. And I've just been really fortunate with this one that it hasn't. So what I like about this gun, um, it's accurate, it's easy to use, it's very simple. After you get used to shooting the Glock, they're very comfortable to shoot. You just have to get used to the grip angle, and you can't say, well, I like to carry a 1911, but I don't like the Glock, because they were designed copying the grip angle off the original 1911. Um, but some things I don't like about this one in particular is I feel like the G17 is a very large handgun. Uh, it is difficult to conceal carry at best. I'm 6'5", 265, so I get away with it a little bit better, but it's something to consider if you're purchasing it as your only weapon. I know it's really common for people to only own one gun and that's kind of their universal defend the home, defend the person, utilitarian firearm. Um, if that's the case, I don't recommend a G17 or even any really hand, or even really any handgun for that matter. If you're only going to own one weapon uh, in your entire collection, I would recommend a 12 gauge um, because they're more util utilitarian, right? You can hunt with them um, you can take down larger game. You can take down pretty much anything in North America with a quality 12 gauge. So if you're only going to own one firearm and it has to meet all of your wickets, right? You want to hunt, you want to go out, you want to be able to go shooting with your buddies. Um, you want to be able to take a little bit further shots with slugs or whatever. Uh, and you want to defend your house, I'd recommend the 12 gauge. Uh, but back to the G17 before I go off on a tangent too much. Um, it, it's very, it's not a small. It's, it's rather large and it makes it a little harder to conceal carry if you're only going to own one gun and it has to be a handgun I think my recommendation would be a G19 and 9mm um, I like the 17 I'm a little bit larger I can get away with concealed carrying it a little bit better uh, but um, most people are not 6'5 so if you're a little bit shorter than I am I think you'd be very happy going with the Glock 19 as your handgun. However, you get a G17, um, I do not believe you'll be disappointed. I've had some really good luck out of this one. I've had a lot of fun. I'm actually going to shoot it later today. So, moving down now. This is right. This is a Legion model, and we'll check it clear as well. And it is empty as well. 
So I don't like the Glock right now. Fire the safety is built into the trigger mechanism. Um, these are about the safest pistols in the market. If you don't squeeze the trigger, these aren't going off. They have a safety, it's hammer operated, and the hammer falls and strikes the aft end of the firing pin, which sends it forward into the primer of the cartridge, and it's not any gunpowder sitting in the barrel, or correction, the projectile down the barrel. Um, but these do have a decocking lever. And what it does is it drops the hammer, but not, if you watch it, it does not drop it all the way forward enough. It's just a little bit of a reset to make sure that it does not strike your firing pin um, when you hit that decocking lever. Now, uh, some upsides about the SIG. They're very comfortable handguns. They're very accurate handguns and they're very reliable handguns. However, they are hammer fired which I think is one reason I would place them behind the Glocks on the list, right? Because hammer, I do not believe hammer fire is as reliable as striker fire. I have never jammed this clock SIGs in the past. I've jammed P220s, I've jammed P225s, I've jammed P8s, and I've jammed the, the P365 or whatever it is. I have not shot this one um, a lot. I have not jammed it yet. But that is not to say that it won't happen today when we take it to the range. So this is a newer firearm. I bought this one new. And I saved up for a long time and I found it on sale. That was the biggest reason I purchased it. Um, but I found it on sale. It's very comfortable. Uh, it's very well distributed. It comes with tritium sights. It comes with a match grade barrel. And it comes with a upgraded trigger to make the, hand, the trigger pull a little lighter. And uh, it holds 15 plus one, the same as the standard Beretta M9 um, and the G17, or correction, the G19 as well. And they're very, very accurate little pistols. Um, they're a very good choice in pistol. Again, I do not think you would be disappointed in your decision if this was a pistol you decided to get. Uh, however, if you gave me the choice and you told me I had to pick Glock or Sig, I'm going to carry a Glock. Moving on down the line. G21, uh, 45 caliber double stack handgun, right? And the reason I have this is, again, I'm a larger uh, individual and the, the width of the grip fits me really, really well. Uh, it feels good, it's really easy to get in. It, it snaps on target very well, and I've had a lot of really good luck shooting this pistol over the years. So that's another thing you need to consider is size of gun. And, and, and I, don't, I do not conceal carry this pistol very often. If it's cold, I will, but most of the time this is what I wear when I'm doing work around the farm. I'll wear it on my hip uh, where it's open because I like how it how it shoots. I shoot it better than I shoot my G17, my 9mm, simply because of how much larger the pistol itself is and how much bigger my hands are than I feel like what they designed the G17 to be in. However, um, people with smaller hands do seem, tend to struggle shooting a G21. They're, they're fairly large handguns. And this is the SF, uh, which makes it a little bit uh, smaller than a, and a little bit slimmer than a standard Glock 21. Uh, if you are going to get one, this is one I recommend. Myself and my brother both carry these. They're, they're very, very, very high quality pistols. And they shoot very, very, very well and they're very user friendly. Now, one thing that I do want to talk about while I have the floor is the addition of night sights and a light to your handguns. Uh, you don't have to go crazy. On your light, uh, this is a stream light. I think I have a stream light on as well. And they have sure fires on this pistol. And I actually have a sure light. I just took it off um, recently. But you don't have to go crazy. Uh, you don't have to get the newest, baddest, brightest flashlight. You just need a light that works on your pistol. Uh, a quality light that works. You know, don't don't get don't get a piece of junk. But you don't need to spend four hundred dollars on a weapon mounted light. That being said, you get what you pay for. Uh, I would, the, the lowest quality I would go would be Streamlight. Um, 
I would either strongly recommend buying a Streamlight or a Surefire and not selling yourself short on your pistol lights. Uh, because if you are using your pistol light, it has already become a very bad day and you do not need to compound that problem with crappy gear. However, gear will not make up for training. Uh, that's my plug on that. Buy night sights for your pistol. I'm not going to give you a recommendation. I'm not even going to tell you in this video what I shoot. Do research, look at them, make an informed and intelligent decision based off of your needs and condition, and purchase the right part you need as an individual. Moving on to the next pistol in line, uh, this is a Beretta M983. The reason I got this is being uh, active duty military in the past, this is what I had. And this is what I trained with, and this is what I shot. Not the A3, but the Beretta M9. So it was a platform I was very familiar with, and when I went into instructing, a lot of the people that I have come through, come through because they're having problems with this weapon, uh, either passing gun shoots or getting qualifications or going through CQP training with it. So I got one so that my students who I teach can use it, and because I'm incredibly familiar with these weapons. Now that being said, uh, this is this is a very very high quality weapon. Uh, I know a lot of people have a lot of backlash to say about the Berettas, but here's my plug on it: the Berettas the United States Navy uh, use and own are rated to one five thousand rounds service life. And when I was in the weapons that we took to the range, were shooting five zero to five five thousand rounds of service life before we could get them back and get them swapped. Uh, that is at almost four times uh, design service life, and they were still going and working more than they were failing. They are not crappy pistols. The, the maintenance that's been done on them and the care that's been taken for them is, is crap. Uh, I have never had any issues out of this pistol. Um, now, granted, I've only had this pistol for about a year now, um, and I've only shot it probably a thousand rounds, maybe. But I haven't had any issues out of it. And everyone that's shot it has truly enjoyed shooting it. And if you are buying a weapon, opinions about other weapons, uh, and you did, and the M9 was your sidearm, this is what I recommend for you. Uh, they come with a Picatinny rail, so there's no modifications that need to be done to mount almost any weapon light. They come with up. They are fully seracoded, they come with a threaded barrel, and they come with night sights from Beretta. They also come with two different grips. Um, so, just off of ease of transition, it's the same pistol. There's nothing that changes about it except the color. You can go straight from shooting one uh, the day before you get your DD-214, go into the store, pick this up on your way home, and have the exact same weapon that you transition to. There's not a transition, which is why I recommend it for anyone who is in the military and has experience with this, because it is a quality pistol, but you already have the training. There's no substitute for training. There's no amount of gear or gadgets that you can buy that will substitute for quality training with a certified instructor. The, any of these weapons on this table would be more than lethal in the proper hand and any of the weapons on this table would be completely useless in the wrong hands. So we're going to move on. This is a Benelli. This is uh, one of the weapons that I really enjoy training people on and that I very strongly recommend uh, for home defense. Now, before we get started, right, the shotgun is not the end-all, be-all of home defense weapons. It is just not. It does not exist. These things have huge drawbacks. The extension, they only hold 7 plus 1, which may seem like a lot, but when you're dealing with 17 plus 1, 15 plus 1, 17 plus 1, and 12 plus 1, and 45 ACP, 7 plus 1 is not a lot of ammunition. You're going to have to reload more. Um, you're dealing with a limited range, and they are loud. They are ungodly loud when they go off, especially if you shoot one in a confined space or indoors. If you do not believe me on this, wear cheap hearing protection 
and go to an indoor gun range that allows you to shoot buckshot, buckshot and put one round of three inch buckshot through a shotgun at an indoor gun range with either cheap hearing protection on or if you really, really don't believe me and you think you'll be fine, no hearing protection. You're going to rupture your eardrums uh, or at least have some permanent damage and tinnitus going on. They are loud. Uh, I've shot these indoors uh, as part of my military service career. And I've, I can think of a few experiences where earmuffs weren't properly seated or earplugs worked their way out because I was working with a student. And the when we discharged the shotgun, it was just, it was deafening um, to, to hear. And that wasn't even with no hearing protection. That was with hearing protection not fitting correctly. But that being said, they do an extreme amount of damage and 